Input in second language of acquisition. Input is the sine qua non of acquisition. Quite simply, it refers to the language that a learner is exposed to in a communicative context, for example, from reading or listening, or in the case of sign language, from visual language. In all approaches to, this, to second language acquisition, input is an essential component for learning in that it provides the crucial evidence from which learner can form linguistic hypothesis. Input is divided by two, they are instruction and elaboration. Start from instruction, one proposal concerning the function of modified input is that modifying input makes the language more comprehensible. If learner cannot understand the language that is being addressed to them, then that language is not useful to them as they construct their second language grammar. In this example, a teacher of kindergartners, including native and non-native speaker of English at varying level of proficiency, is providing instruction to the class and to individual. The teacher modify their speech to various individuals. Next is elaboration. It is important to note that simplification are not the only form of adjustment, which can also include elaboration, thereby providing the learner with a greater amount of semantic detail. In this example, when the non-native speaker indicate a possible lack of understanding by saying, pardon me, the native speaker replies by elaborating on her original command. Next is about interaction in second language acquisition. Interaction, simply put, refers to the conversation that learner participate in. Interaction are important because it is in this context that learner re receive information about the correctness and more important, about the incorrectness of their utterance. Within the interaction approach, the information that learner receive concerning the incorrectness of their own utterance. Interpreting this is one way of alerting a learner to the possibility of an error in his or her speech, assuming that the error is noticed. The learner then has to determine what the problem was and how to modify existing linguistic knowledge. The, the learner then comes up with a hypothesis as to what the correct form should be. As Swain states, output may stimulate learners to move from the semantic, open-ended, non-deterministic, strategic processing prevalent in comprehension to the complete grammatical processing needed for accurate projection. Output, those would seem to have a potentially significant role in the development of syntax and morphology. The next is the function of output. First, after producing an initially problematic utterance, or what happened for the boat, and receiving feedback about its lack of comprehensibility in the form of a clarification request, uh, what? The NNS, the NNS in uh, example number three, appears to realize that his utterance was not understood, pushed to reformulate his initial utterance in order to facilitate and as understanding, he modifies his linguistic output by reformulating the utterance in a more target-like way. The next is an example of hypothesis testing in provided uh, in example 4 uh, in the next slide. This example comes from a study in which learners were involved in interactions or videotaped and then interviewed immediately following, using the video as a prompt. The retrospective comments given in the learner's uh, first language, which was English, or in particular, I'll say it and see, demonstrate that the learner was using the conversation as a forum through which she could test the accuracy of her note. Here is the example of uh, two functions in the previous slide. Then, 
another function is to promote automaticity, which refers to the routinization of language use. Little efforts is expanded when dealing with automatic process. Uh, example, driving from home to work is automatic and does not require much thought as to the road to take. Uh, automatic process come about as a result of consistent mapping of the same input to the same pattern of activation over many trials. Next is about how interaction brings about learning. The relationships among these three components can be summed up by Long's uh, frequently cited explanation that negotiation for meaning and especially negotiation work that triggers interactional adjustments by the NS or more competent interlocutor facilitates acquisition because it connects input, internal learner capacities, particularly selective attention, and output in productive ways. Through interaction, the learner's attentional resources or selective attention are directed to problematic aspects of knowledge or project. The feedback explicit and implicit. There are two broad types of feedback, explicit and implicit. Explicit feedback includes corrections and metalinguistic explanation. Of concern to us here are implicit forms of feedback, which include negotiation strategies such as confirmation checks. Expressions that are designed to elicit confirmation that an utterance has been correctly heard or understood. For example, is, it, is this what you mean? Conference, comprehension checks. Expressions that are used to verify that an intellector has understood. For example, did you understand? Request uh, re uh, Repressing of non-target like entrance using a more target like forms while maintaining the original meaning. Clarification requests expressions designed to elic elicit clarification of the intellectors transcending utterance for example what did you say explicit feedback explicit feedback is defined in general as the process of providing the liner the liner the liner with the direct forms of feedback Explicit correction provide from the correction of linguistic form, form or structure at or near linguistic error. It explained further that this feedback can be the crossing out of a word, plus the provisions of grammar rules. In the other words, the teacher ident identifies an error and corrects it for the students. Providing the providing an example of the proper form. Implicit feedback. Implicit feedback is defined as furnishing the type of error that has been made but not providing a correction. The feedback where the educator points out the an error has been made but doesn't correct it. The student must identify and correct the error themselves. Okay, for the next, we will discuss about attention. Attention is believed to be one of mechanism that mediates between input and learning. Attention, which is broadly conceptualized, can be thought of as a mechanism that allows learners to adjust a portion of the input they receive. Based on Smith, for example, argues that learning cannot take place without awareness because learners must be consciously aware of linguistic input.
in order to internalize this awareness and learning cannot be separated the cognitive construct of attention awareness and the related construct of paying attention are all part of the l2 interaction learning process for the next is about common misunderstanding here we will consider two areas of common misconception about input interactions and SLS. This relates to the nature of the interaction approach and the relationship between the interaction approach and teaching methods. The first misconception concerns the scope of the interaction approach. The second misconception is that the interaction approach can be directly applied to classroom methodology for example working on task-based language teaching and focus on form are both very interesting on the interaction hypothesis as part of the theoretical basis the the interaction approach like most other accounts of second language acquisition is primarily focused on how language is learned, thus direct application to the classroom may be premature.